be equal to the weight or volume, whichever you like to say, of the roller. Therefore, each roller in itself is a generator of its own. Here is a magnetic demonstration which so many people witness. There are letters in the books of people from Australia who saw this demonstration. This particular one is from the report of Gunnar Sandberg of Sussex University. Unfortunately, he gives you a slight wrong explanation. He says, when you place the roller at the edge, it accelerates to its cruising speed. He could not tell you it instant go to the cruising speeds. The other people tell you in their report it goes instant to the cruising speed. Why should Gunnar said, Sandberg say it accelerates? The reason is this. He works in the electrical department of Sussex University. He should know why it goes instant and he does not know. It baffles him. If I was in this place, I would say, this go goes instant to cruising speed, but at this time I cannot explain why. But we will investigate it and tell you when we know. It would be much, shall we say, polite, much more professional than the way he went about it. You see, as we, ex we shall explain a little later why it goes instant to its cruising speed. Now this is the reason why the roller rotates. We have four elements, you see the colour shown each element. What is happening, we have energised with DC and on this DC we have used AC. The AC and the DC must be switched on exactly at the same instant. The AC must be at zero point and it must be on the upward climb. It must switch off at zero point on the complete of a cycle. If you fail to get that right, the AC will erase the DC. But if you get that timing dead right, you left with thousands of little pinpricks of forces. It is difficult at this time to say if these are true magnetic uh, points or whether we have got surges of electrons on one side and surges of holes on the other side. But one thing is certain, that if the plate and the roller are it uh, magnetized precisely the same, we have a strange position. And it says, you have got one pole there, but you don't have a pole there. The pole is over here. The next pole is above, that is not in line. You have a wave. What happens is that when you place the roller on that plate and you let go, the magnetic field lifts the roller, but at the moment this happens, eddy currents form. It pulls the roller down. If your sums are right, they balance to a point where the roller floats. It does not touch the surface. There is such a torque that the roller must rotate, and it rotates on its axis. Now, if we only have two lines of magnetic force on each end and two on the plate, it sits there, smiling at you. <laughs> and that's no good to us. So what do we do about it? The answer is simple. Do something. I take the bar, I cut it in eight segments. Now, I do the energising again on each segment. Now we have something completely different. We have still got the two outer ones and they fit on the plate with the two on the plate and the roller cannot move either way sideways. But now you see we have gotten six more 
runs of these mysterious poles they are exerting a force on the plate so it accelerates another beautiful thing about this is you just drop it on the plate and away it goes and they say how did you do that I didn't do it that did it I look at this and I say why do we always take the hard road because when you drop the next one in it just sorts itself out it finds its opposite point to the one operating every road it must go the same way no matter how many plates you have they will always go the same way now the question is how do we find how many rolls you want on the first plate because we obviously need to know that we've got a steady output but the sum is quite easy you take square three you know the answer you're all going to say nine you're wrong it's nine fields every field has a value when you calculate these values out it is the sum of each column or each row or the diagonal it's the answer to the material quantity you need every element is defined by that square that you're going to use it is the right assembly of this material that makes this technology possible when you do the magnetizing of each segment if you've got your sums right and you powder it with fine dust you're looking at a magnetic field you have never seen it is a bicycle wheel it is exactly the spikes of a wheel when you turn it up on its running edge you just have this wave pattern it's holding it separate that's nothing there is no reaction nothing so if you put it on the plate you have instant reaction but it is instant whatever the cruising speed is it travels instantly it's free to go there is no acceleration we'll now take the next view as you see what we have is actually two waveforms going one di direction and then we actually got two others going in the opposite direction we'll look at the next now this is an uh, enlargement of one of the plates and this actually is a true plate we give the measurements we show you the ingredients we use as you see we use a grey earth at our outer edge then you see we use a nylon and I like to say why I fancy nylon we can use plastic but in Germany we see when I look at the finished thing that the, nylon, uh, the plastic looks terrible crude it looks hard, it looks brittle and we believe that nylon gives a better finish it's, it's an insulant, an insulator it has a double gate but there are three classes of nylon 6-6 that's what we call a positive charge this is where the manufacturer takes away electron from each molecule you can have a neutral which is the standard one then you can have a negative charge this is where they add an extra electron to each molecule and it's the negative one I use next to that we take an ingredient it can be iron or any other the uh, magnetizing materials and then on the outer coat we put one which will not magnetize but it must produce an eddy current when a magnetic field get, comes in touch with it that is the basic of it